Good morning. Um, my name is John Lane. I am the moderator of this session labeled Open Lifelong Learning. Um, I wanted to remind everybody that closed caption is not automatically turned on, but there is a closed caption button at the bottom of the Zoom screen if you need it. Um, also, a survey will be sent out for the program. Uh, please take a moment to fill out the survey so we can help make uh, the next year's session even better. Uh, today's session speakers are Caitlin Kelly and Bame Ale. Um, Caitlin Kelly is a graduate research assistant at Oklahoma State University. And I must say, as a proud OSU graduate, go Pokes! Uh, in the higher education program at OSU with a research focus on intercultural uh, communication competencies and the international student experience. And as a research assistant, she is focused on assessing the efficacy of OER as a tool for lifelong learning. She is actively contemplating the intersections of these research agendas. Um, Bame Ale is also a graduate research assistant at East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma. She is a management science student and has a bachelor's in political science and criminal justice. She has a research scope and on open education and how it can impact underserved communities throughout lifelong learning. Her research interests also include copyright and intellectual property scope for open education. Okay, ladies, take it away. All right, well, good morning all. And since maybe this is a Texas conference, it's good morning y'all, right? Is that, am I doing it right? Um, <laughs> so we're excited to have you here with us this morning. Um, Bimmy and I are going to talk a little bit about um, lifelong learning and how OER can be a piece of that. Thank you, John, for introducing us. And Bimmy, if you wanna just go to the next slide, we'll jump right in. I'm sorry, give me a second. Okay. There it goes. <laughs> All right. So um, Bimmy and I are both graduate research assistants because of the, um, those that we work with have applied through a grant through the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences and were awarded a three-year research project grant um, in which we're evaluating an OER's efficacy in developing lifelong learning competencies. So today we're going to talk about where that project is, where that project is going, and some of those first steps that we've been taking as we just started this in September of a three-year process. So the goal altogether is to produce a research methodology for OER librarians. Um, so within that methodology, we're really hoping to create a toolkit that's hands-on um, that includes um, designing and testing an instrument of OER's efficacy on lifelong learning, including information for administering and scoring that instrument, and including potential study designs and using that instrument. So we really hope that that toolkit creates some opportunities for, for people across the nation to really dig in and the world um, to how OER may be used in a library setting or beyond. Um, really hoping to increase the number of robust academic studies um, and hopefully having a toolkit can help people develop that. And then increase the diversity of the population studied um, including a community college, regional university, and research university. That's what we have done in this grant and hoping that it continues to build upon that diversity of different um, types of institutions that can use this project as we move forward. Um, our colleague is not with us today, but I do want to highlight that community college involvement is a really big piece of, of our grant and that um, what they bring in is invaluable that the community college, Redlands Community College, um, El Reno, Oklahoma, is 12% Native American students, which is their largest minority group, and 78% part-time students. So really, when we're talking about lifelong learning, you can imagine that part-time students need to be a piece of that as well. A lot of these are students who have returned for another degree, have returned for um, additional educational opportunities. What we've learned through working with our colleague is that community college employees wear so many hats. Um, when you're talking to her, she's on the phone answering questions, she's chatting other people, she has multiple roles. Um, and so really getting that uh, involvement in this grant has been helpful as well. Can I shift? I'm sorry, give me a minute. No worries. Oh, I think you. 
I've Oops. skipped a couple. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Um, so the need for this project developed out of um, really reading the, the Hilton 2019 review that talked about where OER was and what kind of um, uh, research had been done at that point. And it really found that a lot of it was limited to formal education settings. So looking at GPA as, as the outcome or looking at final grades, right? So looking at those kind of metrics of learning that are more um, recent, that Stat statistical focused, right? Um, but what we wanted to see or didn't see there was looking at this in a way that is not confined to the traditional educational setting. So that's where the open learning came, came in. So lifelong learning is something that we want to see beyond traditional schooling, right? So where there's no longer a GPA keeping you in check or there's no longer final grades and so forth. So how are people using uh, OER in a lifelong learning setting and how can it encourage lifelong learning even beyond a traditional educational setting. Um, the, in ap uh, applying for this grant, it also became clear that uh, librarian research methodology training would be helpful to a lot of schools out there, to a lot of librarians who are looking for resources to be able to better help their um, research. And I will take it over from here by talking about lifelong learning competencies that we have gathered so far on the subject of open education resources. We're seeing, um, we're assessing how a, the efficacy of it in impacting lifelong learning. And these are the competencies and outcomes, as well as learning potentials that open education resources had. So first of all, we started with self-regulated learning, uh, which refers to an individual's um, ability to manage um, their learning, as well as developing strategy to assess and judge information correctly. Uh, further, we have social learning, which refers to uh, a means which a, a learner is learning through their immediate environment, as well as reinforcing or challenging social constructs or either under, uh, understanding it also. Um, digital literacy, um, given in recent time that we had to make, we had to transition to a virtual world because of the pandemic, we recognize that digital literacy um, become very important in learning in the future. And this refers to how an individual can navigate the virtual world and information technology to assess, um, to assess information, as well as develop their own judgment with facts and um, other learning materials on the internet. Goal setting refers to an individual's ability to um, develop, goal setting refers to an individual's ability to develop an action plan and the strategy in which a person will use um, to gather information through their goals, as well as the inclination to learn that certain material. Critical thinking um, also refers, mainly refers to an individual's, um, individual's way of gathering knowledge and making judgments about information and assessing which one is relevant to the topic or the field of study. Cultural awareness and expression in today's world when globalization is becoming more prevalent than ever, um, we assume that cultural awareness and expression is relevant in, in noticing how an individual is able to learn within the cultural context and also understand the significance of certain learning materials to that culture as well as to um, external, ex the external environment. Learning to learn simply refers to an individual's inclination to learn and the ability, the excitement, the approach to learning. Um, and finally, self-efficacy refers to an individual's, individual's um, confidence in learning and their ability, and their ability to navigate different kinds of information and be confident about the results. Further, these are lifelong learning skills. So far, when we're developing, so far in developing a toolkit for assessing open education resources, we understand that lifelong learning skills are relevant to this. So far, these are the skills that will be set for inspiration to develop our toolkit for understanding and assessing how open education resources are meant to impact lifelong learning and promoting lifelong learning. Uh, start off with the program for international assessment of adult competences. These are meant to gather the expected adult competences 
And some of them, majority of the items are related to the previous slide in which I discussed about the lifelong learning competencies, affecting lifelong learning skills, lifelong learning tendency skills, and lifelong learning comp competency skills are very similar in nature as they are, they're being used in various fields of learning and knowledge gathering. So this makes it very applicable and not, al not also is it not generic, but it's quite flexible and applying to any field of study. So these are the questions that we are exploring. You can call them our research questions. How can our toolkit include concepts of lifelong learning that are relevant to different cultures in the US and globally, as we have the understanding that learning can be very quite re relative and very subjective in nature. So we're trying to see how, do we, how are we able to cover all bases, as well as what other questions we should be asking, um, because learning seems to be changing decade by decade, and even our approach to learning as the world is changing. So we want to, we want, we want to make this an open-ended question. What questions should we be asking um, in terms of our research? Um, further, there we're going to be having a discussion, and I don't know if the chat has, if the chat has the, Google Docs that relate to it. Oh, Caitlin, my colleague has already posted that. If, if you go ahead and visit the questions and start a discussion, um, a summary of the discussion is posted on this slide here. How does a lifelong learning perspective change the creation of open education resources? How does a lifelong learning perspective change the distribution of OER? Because we understand that accessibility um, is a major issue and serve as a barrier to certain, um, certain OER um, OER initiatives, what are the successful or attempted initiatives for open education resources on your campus or your institutions? Um, we want to know what has been attempted, whether it failed or whether it was successful, what are other people doing, you know, in order to make this, make this um, have more flesh and bones on this research, what are the successful or attempted initiatives for lifelong learning on your campus or your um, institution? So, we also want to know how lifelong learning has been utilized across the, across the board and across different time on your campus and your institution. Although this is going to impact formal and informal um, learning, we would like to know what initiatives has been started. So we know what the current situation is, what the current climate is in regards to open education resources and how to build off of that. Because this is an active research project, we would love to get your input, feel free to for those of you who are keyboard warriors, join us in the Google Doc. If those of you who are brave enough to want to unmute yourself and chat with us right now, we would love to get your feedback. Um, Bimmy, can you go back to our questions for a little bit so people can think about them and chime in? And it seems like maybe we need to refresh our doc, although I am getting in, so I'm not quite certain how else I can do that. I think it might be on view only. There's an eyeball. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that said, if we can't get this up and running, the discussion questions are on the screen and I'm be happy to take uh, any ideas or thoughts in the app as, or in the chat as well while we kind of work uh, troubleshoot this. Yeah, it would be possible to get feedback from people and questions. Um, the discussion questions are put up on the slide here as most people can see. So if you can't have trouble accessing um, the Google Docs, it's always possible to start a discussion in the chat. So there's a question that popped up. Does anyone do much with um, Ollie on campus? And, and uh, whether they, is it Ollie, is that correct? Yes, but I think I spelled it wrong. I think it should be O-L-L-I. O-L-L-I. 
Uh, are you referring to the scale? Like, no, the Ollie Lifelong Learning Institutes, and it looks like there's several of them in Texas. And I don't know if anyone here is involved with those, what kind of research they're doing. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say, so we're, we are Oklahoma as well. And I'm checking out the institutes. Um, but that is something that we've kind of been chatting with. Um, the institute that's here on the Oklahoma State campus um, really focuses on um, 55 plus, and not that that's not where we're at, but I think that that brings in a lot of different ideas about what is lifelong learning. It's definitely something that we've had to think about is how they're defining lifelong learning versus how we're maybe defining lifelong learning as we're looking at populations that are, um, I think that that opens a huge door of what is lifelong learning and what populations are we talking about, right? Whether it's creating a new, gaining a new skill, moving forward, how does that affect all of these different um, people who might be part of lifelong learning? And thanks, Kathy. Drop the, the Texas link in the chat. And I agree completely, Deidre, that this is the skills are changing daily. And like Bimmy mentioned, the idea of um, just this pandemic, how it's changed how we operate, right? We're here in a virtual um, conference, not together in person. So what skills are those and what are we building here to be using Zoom to, to conference with each other? What are What do those skills look like and how can that be developed? And does OER having that as a background play a role in being flexible to develop those skills? <laughs> and right, exactly. So knowledge society, is that real? Is that a buzzword? What does that mean? Absolutely. I don't know if you're expecting an answer, Kathy. <laughs> See, I think I saw something further down. If anybody can, in the discussion, in the Google Docs um, discussion, it's also possible to just put down questions that we should be asking in regards to the research. As I mentioned early on, you know, we're working with a very modern, up-to-date approach of open education resources and how it, how it can influence lifelong learning. Uh, so putting that perspective will be also vital to our research. And I see that there's some conversation going on under how does lifelong learning perspective change the distribution of OER? And I think that's a really good point that the importance of access bounded by affiliation. So if we're thinking about creating OER, but then it's only created for one community, right? So only created for a certain institution, does that, how does that affect our, our knowledge base and, and coming back to that later if we're really looking at lifelong learning? And so, and so somebody else chimed in and said that we should be thinking about this as we're designing any open resource. So um, how can people, or what is the access level of those resources and how can people find them even? Right, and I think that dovetails with what John asked in the chat. Uh, Oklahoma has parts that are very rural areas. How are you able to support librarians and staff to new to OER? What have you guys found with that? Oh, good, Marla addressed it. And then Mandy 
are you seeing OER develop more for workforce vocational areas? What do you guys think? I say, Bimmy, you might be able to talk to this a little bit about what you've been seeing in lifelong learning. Um, of course, there have been research and findings about OER being applicable to the workforce. I wouldn't say the development has been quite advanced as it should be, but there is potential uh, in that area so far because the competencies that are expected out of OER are those that not only applies to the academic environment, they also apply to, you know, further down the road in a person's career, in your job, in your daily life, daily affairs in general. So I assume that it's not really, I would say it's not really as nuanced as it should be, or it has not reached the point it should be. And that's also the point of our research to see how, how open education resources can, how can, can be used as a, a way of promoting um, lifelong learning, as it's meant, as it says in the name, lifelong learning, learning throughout life. So I assume that in the future, probably down the line, um, there will be a more importance and significance being placed on that. And I want to say, Mandy, I think that that's a great point. Um, also, that might be where we have our blinders on, right? So we are people who work within the institution of higher learning. So maybe there are resources out there that we haven't come across yet that is more um, geared towards um, skills access for um, for voc workforce, vocational, and so forth. Um, and if anyone has resources on that that they'd love to share with us, we'd be more than open because, yeah, maybe that is just something that we are currently not aware of because there's all other networks out there that maybe we haven't tapped into yet. And does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I have a, a resource for you for, um, I think it's called Open Skill. And I'm, I have a, they actually started a pad with a bunch of different resources. Let me share that with you. That would be excellent. Thanks, John. Yeah. It's all, and uh, that's the pad that was started. And there, there's lots of different resources. One of them, what they talked about was Open Skills, I believe is what it's called. Cool. And it has those kinds of resources for vocational type. Um, training resources, I guess. Cool. But there's a bunch of different ones in there if anybody was interested in. And it was encouraged in a previous version that if anybody had any more that they want to add, they can add them there, of course. Uh, oh, yeah, there was also uh, open uh, open nursing materials. Um, it's called Open RN, I think was another one. Nice. But it's all in that pad that I believe was mentioned. Uh, so it was an open RN project that was a, that's funded by a grant, I believe is what that was called. Uh, that session, by the way, uh, Kathy was from a previous uh, earlier morning networking session from, uh, it was happened at 9.30 this morning or something. No problem, Mandy. As our time wraps up, Amy, do you wanna go back to the slides? Uh, of course. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. So um, the time is wrapping up really shortly. And if I could ask Caitlin and uh, Ms. Ale to uh, please maybe post your email addresses there in the chat. And if anybody has additional questions, they can grab the email and um, suggest or some uh, research information for you guys or maybe join your club. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, I'm here. Uh, and then also, if you go back to the platform um, where you logged into our session, both this handout of the slides and then also the handout that was created to um, kind of talk through how the grant was applied for are both there. And if you have any questions on either of those, we'd be happy to, to take them over email. Yes, and further, um, aside from the handout, please follow us on Twitter and connect with us on Moodle. Our Twitter is at Lifelong Open. Um, there's a lot of activities we have on there, asking questions from polls to interactive uh, sessions. 
I will be glad to either take a direct message from anyone who has questions and see what we've been up to. We have our recent summary of progress of what we've um, we've accomplished so far in the first year. Um, it's pinned on our Twitter page. Um, also, we have um, Moodle of OCOLearnOKPortal.org. And I would appreciate if you stay in contact and keep engaging with us. And this is an acknowledgement. This project was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Okay. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you very much. If you have a chance, everybody, to uh, please um, uh, take care of a, a survey that may be sent out. And if you have a chance also to enjoy the rest of the conference. Everybody have a wonderful rest of the Friday and enjoy your weekend. Thanks, all. Thank you.